The Hadley Downs in Essex is best known for its medieval castle and the site of the 2012 Olympic mountain bike track. But its history spans many more eras and traces can still be seen everywhere, some more obvious than others. From its Iron Age roundhouse to a heavy anti-aircraft battery serving into the Cold War, the Downs environment is less natural than it may seem. Scattered amongst the bike track at Sandpit Hill is TN9 Hadley, the ruins of a World War II anti-aircraft gun site which would have protected the Thames estuary during its most dangerous time in history. Most of the buildings that survive are part of its encampment and stand as a reminder that mankind's need for defence is a priority that hasn't changed over the centuries. Some of the more subtle remains of Hadley's history are from the Salvation Army. Still operating here, their story began with a farm colony in 1891. The Beyond the Point team met with London Mudlark and YouTuber Nicola White to uncover smaller fragments of the colony's archaeology. Hi all, it's B2P Joe, B2P Liam and special guest Nicola here at Hadley today. Now, 10 years ago on our very first BTP video, we came to Hadley Castle and today we are returning to check out not only the castle but some remains just over the railway track. So today we're going to be doing something a bit different. We're going to do a bit of mudlarking and looking for some finds. So that's something we haven't really had much opportunity to sort of do on Beyond the Point yet, but it's something that's always interested us. And we've got an expert with us to help us out. Um, yeah, and we're going to be taking a look at some of the ruins associated with a Salvation Army colony that used to be spread out in the hills here in Hadley Downs um, around a hundred years ago and people would come here from London to farm, they might come here to make bricks and to learn various skills if they were quite impoverished and hopefully sort of build up a better life out of the city um, and we're going to go and check out some of the remains of that today. So Nicola could you just tell us a little bit about your channel and what it is that you do? Yeah of course, well first of all thank you very much for inviting me along today. Uh, Liam and, and Joe. <laughs> and so I have a channel which is Nicola White Mudlark. What I do essentially is I search for history along the banks of the River Thames and I'm looking for fragments of the past which are washed out with the tide from the Thames but also in other places along the Thames estuary in Kent and in Essex. And I love exploring the stories behind these little fragments. It could be a piece of pottery with a name, it could be a, a medal or a button. There's always a fascinating story behind these finds. So it's exciting to be here today with Beyond the Point who uncover the stories behind these abandoned places. And so I am very much looking forward to exploring this area. And some time ago, actually, I found a piece of pottery in the Thames mud, which would have come from a cup that the Salvation Army used. And so oh. I've brought it here with me today and I'm excited to find out more about the Salvation Army and about the, the area, the brickworks, the farm and what used to go on here and see the jetty. And who knows, we might even find some history in the mud. Yeah. So we've just been taking a, a walk down the hill from the castle and we're now heading over the train line and we're going to head down to the um, the shore but on the way we found loads of little bits of pottery out in the fields here and apparently this is from a old dump which maybe came from the Victorian era and rubbish might have been brought in from the jetty that we're going to visit in from London and it was sort of broken up when the fields got ploughed so Already we've been making some quite good little finds. Times we've got this lovely bottle stopper here and Very also cool. a little doll's hand. But that's another look at the bottle stopper. Great, pulling out the finds already. I know, <laughs> I know.
So we're at the site of the Brickworks Jetty for the Salvation Army. And they had a Brickworks up there in the hills, in the distance, and they had this small railway running down here over the current train line and it went out to this jetty where barges from London um, would have later on probably come in and deposited rubbish to the tip um, which we were looking at the site of earlier but before that the Salvation Army exported the bricks that they made to this jetty and this probably then took those bricks up to London where they might have been used so who knows there could be some buildings in London made with bricks that were made in this place which is now non-existent and the jetty itself there's a few bits and bobs left from it apart from the actual top of it <laughs> it's just a couple of posts but they're quite big there's a bit of pottery here and i don't know if this is just a it's got right. something on the, the back of it can you, Let's have a look. can you see what that is? Oh yeah. 87 Union St Borough, London. So uh, it'd be interesting to see when we get home if that still exists. Yeah, it will. Let me have a look. I wonder if it's got anything on the other side as well. No, it hasn't, but it's got... Oh, it has, look. Oh, it has. Oh, this is good. And <laughs> so now where's my tissue? <laughs> I'm going to have to use a leaf. No, no, yeah. it's good. It's got something on here and it definitely comes from somewhere maybe a restaurant or something in london so a piece of pottery that's been brought in from london and deposited at this jetty so i'm looking forward to looking that up and now i'm sure that they're dying to get to the end of the jetty but i am going to look for some pottery here <laughs> joe's pulled out a large one here i mean liam always says it's not about the size but i found the biggest piece so far <laughs> yeah all right joe you don't have to show off <laughs> Pretty cool though. It is. Don't Quite know what that was um, from, but some kind of large. What? Damn, yeah. Know. Well, you imagine it would have been almost something like that. Yeah. It's because it's flat. It wasn't a pipe, so just maybe a very big jar or something. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe this is one of the original bricks made in the Hadley Downs, and it's ended up just in the mud. <laughs> at this end of the jetty there's these sort of concrete pillars um, they are pretty pretty rough looking not like the concrete that we're used to now <laughs> um, look it's made with sort of all kinds of bits of flint, um, like cement, clinker, bricks, perhaps some of the local, locally made bricks. Um, but there would have been lots of these pillars in a row here. Perhaps this was like the, you know, part of the jetty. And there's more pillars there. So this could have been a concrete section or concrete sides with a wooden top, perhaps running from here all the way out to where the wooden pillars are. Mate, workhouse, something. Quite cool find. Give it a spin round. Not too shabby. So we managed to see that it says Camberwell Workhouse. Um, so I'm not too sure then what AB stands for. Hopefully later on we can give it a bit of a clean up and uh, find out. Not always yeah, they had their Joe, own. yeah, so Joe found this. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is amazing. Look at that. I absolutely love that. Camberwell Workhouse, AB. AB, that sounds almost as if it's personalised or something, yeah, I know. doesn't it? <laughs> that is spectacular. Well, that is just 
the sort of find which fills me with joy. Cool. <laughs> So, I'm out in amongst the pillars remaining from the Salvation Army jetty. Quite eerie really, and they're actually quite tall. Almost twice as tall as me. And if we carry on a little bit further around here, we can see this bad boy. An old anchor and it's still hanging off the end of the jetty all the year, years later. Now, it may be a bit of a challenge to reach it. But I think we can do it. But I think it's gotta be checked out, gotta be photographed as well, properly. Not the easiest terrain. Yeah, there's a bit of sinkage going on here. Oh, look at this. There it is. That is pretty cool. And the rope is still attaching it. Awesome. Here's another view of the big old anchor. Look at that, that is pretty impressive to be honest. The way it's just hanging on there by rope. Somehow, after all this time, it's not falling off. Crazy. Here's another find, R White. Guessing that's the lemonade manufacturers way back when they used to use ceramic bottles. Right. So here we have another sadly broken part of a bottle, but if it was in, in its entirety, it would be a cod bottle. And these, these bottles used to have marbles in to seal them, and children often right. used to break them to get the marbles out. But it's really, really lovely, and it's our whites. And again, it's probably, probably water. But water. Cool. Yeah, let me know. But normal. They're beautiful bottles. Um, and it's a shame that that one is broken. Still, learn something new every day. You do, you do. I've just seen another R. White's thing here. <laughs> They're all around. Yeah. Yeah, another R. White's bottle piece. They get everywhere. They were just so Rubbish popular, and... I think everybody used yeah. to drink them back in the day. Yeah. Cool. Found that. It's oh. incredibly small, but it's the first of our uh, pipe finds. Oh. Small piece of a clay pipe. First one, Joe was saying, we haven't seen any of those yet, and they're often quite common around the these parts. But um, so these yeah, shaft bits are quite common, uh, but the bowl ends on the end are quite hard to find. Uh, we actually have one. Um, well, I've got one at home. And it's a nice decorative sailor one bowl at the end, which is really nice. But yeah, these are quite common, but quite rare here because it's the only one we found. So I've made a find. Down here, can you see it? Put it out and see what we've got. Obviously, if previously ordered, I'd imagine. So in some ways, maybe it's some sort of medicine or something that was a bit in limited supply. Tantalizing little fragment here. Um, it's got the address uh, which is in the Strand in London. We've got part of the name, the Imperial something, maybe the Imperial Hotel, but this little bit in the middle here is quite uh, intriguing. 
CAT and then Rodasan. So these little things make you want to just get straight back home and find out all about them. Yeah, so I'm really thrilled with this bit. It's part of a little pot of Holloway's ointment, which was a very well-known quack cure back in the day, late 19th century, used to cure pretty much every ailment under the sun. <laughs> Not COVID, unfortunately. Well, no, but I'm sure if Holloway was here today, he'd have something to say about it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I'd love to know why that... One of the Salvation Army colony's most hidden remains is this viaduct, which once formed a bridge for another smaller railway to cross the current London South End C to C line. It would have been for delivering bricks and rubbish to and from the jetty. The bridge was built in 1892. The Salvation Army actually halted plans for a railway station to be built at Hadley in 1911 due to fears it would interfere. The brickworks and railway closed in 1914. Maybe if they hadn't been built, thousands of commuters would be using a Hadley railway station today. We headed back to base to examine our finds. So we're in the car park of the um, Olympic bike track area here at the Hadley Downs. We've got the finds out um, and we're going to have a little look through and just see sort of what we have come away with. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to start? <laughs> yeah, so. I'll tell you what, Nicola, yeah, why don't you, you tell us, what do you think are the, some of the best finds here? <laughs> okay, uh, well, uh, we've got some marvellous fragments of muddy history here. And I've got to say, I've already said it several times, but I'm really excited about your bowl here from Camberwell Workhouse with the AB on it. That's just brilliant. I love to imagine what would have been in that bowl uh, back in the 19th century, back probably mid to late 19th yeah. century. You've got a really nice piece of uh, boat ink here, um, a little ink pot. People would have put their pens on these little grooves. Um, now, You've also got some lovely fragments to research, mineral water from somewhere. A little tiny bit of clay pipe fragment, yeah. <laughs> and we did in fact find some clay pipe bits. In fact, uh, Joe even found a tiny bit with the very hint of a maker's mark on it. So that was reassuring because at first we didn't find any no, pipe no. bits at all, and I do like to find clay pipes when I go out. So you've got some nice little pieces here, and then moving on to myself, this is some of my favourite kinds of finds. They've got names on them to research. We've got a little mysterious piece of pottery here and an address, which is great because I'll be able to find out where that is or what it was. It's from the Strand in London. Another piece here from London. It looks like it could be called Wilkes or something like that. I'll be able to find out about that. A little doll's arm. And a wonderful little fragment of Holloway's ointment, a cure-all from the Victorian times. That is a very good bit. I <laughs> know, I love that. I've got a few got pieces. A on I've got a few well. pieces of that and cool. uh, it's, it's, it's brilliant. I'm really happy with that. So yes, yeah, a few little pieces to research and so I'm going to take these home. Oh, and I've also got my almost complete um, torpedo bottle here, which I think is from Schweppes, an right. old Schweppes bottle of aerated water. So I've got yeah. plenty to look up and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this home, I'm going to wash everything and then do a bit of research and come back and I'm going to do a roundup on my video in my studio. Very there exciting, look yeah. forward to it. Yeah, and I'm also going to do some research on your bowl, which I have <laughs> to say, I think for me, that is find of the day. That's find of the day, but that was Joe's. <laughs> yeah, well done, Joe. But it's been, <laughs> it's been really special finding out about this area and seeing some of the old buildings where so much used to go on, and which are now 
um, some of them in ruins and just standing quiet really. Yeah. So Definitely. yeah, it's been a really, really brilliant expedition. Yeah, no, it's been a really good day. Thank you um, for coming out to us and you know showing us <laughs> what exactly you do in that. Yeah. And of course, don't forget to check out Nicola's video uh, from today and also her other videos on her YouTube channel, which of course is linked below. You've also got your website, haven't you? Which you said yes. you haven't sort of done much on it recently, but it is still, I thought, was really interesting. And it, you make sort of crafts and bits out of some of the finds that you make. Is it tidelineart.com? Yes, that's so, right. It's tidelineart.com. And yes, there's quite a few little parts to that website, so you might want to go and take a look. Thank you very yeah. much, guys. Thank you very much. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to us and to Nicola. Until next time, see you later.